Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use FileZilla to upload files to a web server and also how to manage your files on that server. So one of the first things you need is a copy of FileZilla. So to get a free copy you can go in your web browser, you can go to FileZilla-project.org and you want to download the FileZilla client and the reason is you pick the client if you want to transfer files. If you're hosting your own web server and you want to make files available to others is when you would choose the server. So for our purposes you want to download and install the FileZilla client and you're going to do that based on your operating system. So you want to download, unzip, and install the program for your particular platform. Then once you've done that, you can open up your FileZilla program. The next thing you need to make sure you have is a web host, some place to load your files up to on a web server. And those, there are a number of those. Uh, they vary in the information that they give you for logging in to uh, FTP or to transfer your files to them. So you want to read their documentation and check out their support information. But when you get an account, you get uh, information on what to include for the host name, the username, and the password. Now in FileZilla, there are a couple of places where you can put this information in. Uh, on the opening screen, well, first of all, let me just give you an overview. We have menus. Uh, here that we can use to access different commands. Uh, there is a toolbar to access some quick commands that way. We have a quick connect bar where we plug in this information and hit quick connect to connect to your web host. This next section, this area in here will display your connection to your web host. Like as you're trying to log in, if there are any issues with with uh, connecting to your host. The left side of this screen is your local computer and then the right side is your web server that you're connected to. So right now you can see we're not connected to any server but after we connect then we'll be able to see the files that are on our server. And then there's a little section down here that will be the progress as we start to take files from our computer and load them over to your web server, you'll be able to see the progress bars go across down here. If you have a lot of files or some large files, then you'll see them on there for a little bit of time while they load up. And in this example today, we only have a few small files, so they're going to go by here pretty quickly. So, assuming that you have your information from your web host, uh, we can use the quick connect bar to connect. Now what you put in your host information again is going to be determined by your web host. Uh, some servers or some hosts have you put in uh, a general FTP information. For example, 100 web space has you type in ftp.100ws.com and then your username and your password. Port, you generally don't need to fill in unless your web host gives you something different to do. Uh, so this host information is again determined by your web host of what you should fill in there. Many other web hosts, instead of uh, an FTP like that, tell you to use your domain name. Like GoDaddy is an example of one that uh, uses your domain name. So uh, I'm going to put in a domain name that I have. Oh, I'm a dccstudent.com. And I would put in my username and my password and to click Quick Connect. Now, so this is one way. Uh, when you use FileZilla, then each time you come in here, you have to put in this information and the Quick Connect bar. You can also use the uh, site Manager. The first icon on the toolbar here is the Site Manager. 
and you can create a new site and keep a listing of the sites that you manage. So I have several websites that I manage on different web servers. So I have the name of them listed here so that I can easily, um, quickly connect to any one of them. So you might be interested in creating a new site if this is the first time you're doing this. And you could just say, you know, um, my personal site. And then over here, you're going to put in the host information, which is the same host information that we were looking at on the quick connect bar. Uh, login type instead of anonymous. You could use normal where you put in your username that you would have put in on the quick connect bar and your password. And then when you click connect, it will connect you to, to your web host, uh, assuming that everything was correct and you're able to make that connection. Um, and then it'll be saved in here so that you can come back in and access it all the time. Let me just cancel out of that. So I'm going to use my, um, my quick, my site manager to connect to my web server. Uh, you can use either technique. I like the other one because I don't have to remember my password all the time. So now you can see that I am connected to my web server. That little message has gone away. Now again, depending on your web host, this may be structured a little bit differently. Some hosts will give you a public HTML. Some will give you uh, your domain name. Like if I double click on my public HTML folder, this is an example of the way some other hosts have it where you have your domain name and everything for your website goes into your domain name folder. So to open up any of these folders, you double click, just like you do on your regular computer, you double click to open a folder. Now on your web server, to go back up a level, we use the folder with the dot dot. Dot dot means to go up a level. So if I wanted to go back up, I can double click and I'm back to where I was before. But on my server, I want to put everything into my domain name, so I'm going to double click to go in there. Now again, yours will look a little different depending on the default setup that you have from your web host. So now I'm in my domain name and uh, right at the, what's called the root, the base of everything. And I have my sample files. Now over here I've navigated to where my website files are that I want to load up to my web server. So I have a little sample site here of uh, just three files, an HTML and an image and a style sheet. Now before I, I go in there, I want to show you my I'm a DCCCstudent.com site and it has no files in it that uh, would be displayed to the user. Now this host shows this message saying that even though I don't have an index file is your starting file. And you can see in my site I don't have any index page. Index is the start page. It's the traditional, the most common start page that you use in developing a site. And so what will happen is when somebody goes to your website, they type in your domain name, it's going to show index.htm or index.html by default. So since I don't have an index page here, uh, my server is set up to show this message saying it has no index file. And it says if you're the site's webmaster, you can fix this by making a file and putting it up here with one of the following names. Now this host has index or default or home as one of the options. Most servers will just use index and not give you these other ones. So it all depends again on your web host. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to FileZilla and I'm going to take these files and I'm going to put them into, I'm going to just select them and I'm just going to drag it over. This is literally going into my .com folder. And so now I have an index.html page there. So I'm going to switch back to my 
server and I'm going to refresh the page. And there it found my index page. Notice that I didn't have to type in index.html because the server by default is going to send index when you go to um, a root folder. So I have a style sheet that's doing the layout and I have my graphic that's up here. Uh, so it is picking up the changes that were made from the web, uh, from the FTP program, uploading the files there. Okay, so now you might be thinking, well, okay, now I've, I'm able to get my files up here and throughout the semester you may have other folders or other projects and you want to keep your pages up here that you started but you want to keep your other projects separate. Now you don't need to go out and get a whole new domain name. That's just too expensive. Uh, I wouldn't want you to do that for this class. But what you can do is you can create folders for your projects and other assignments and these will stay separate from your main uh, home page that you create. So I made a folder up here, uh, you know, one and two and three. And I'm just going to expand this. And you can see up here these have question marks in them. That's because they're empty. There's just like, there's no content in it yet. So if I double click on one, you can see that there's nothing in this folder yet. And on my server, if I go to my browser, now say I wanted to see the content of what was in a folder that was created. I'd say I'm going to type in one. And again, I get this message saying there's no index file. There's no starting page to be served up to the user. So I'll need to put some content into this folder. And I want to make sure that it has an index page so that the user wouldn't have to type in some other, you know, like my myhomepage.html. If that was the starting page, then they'd have to type that in in order for it to display. And you want to make it easy for your users to get there. So in FileZilla, I'm in the one folder, and I'm just going to copy, let's try copying the index page over by itself. And let's see what that looks like in the web server, on the, um, in the browser. So if I refresh, okay. So this is my HTML page. There's no style sheet formatting it. The image is gone. So it is showing me just what's in that folder for my index page. And then if I start to add other things over to it, like I add my logo. And again, most servers are case sensitive, so you want to make sure that your file names are exactly the way that you put them in there. So I'm going to refresh, and now my image shows up. And then let's go in and add the style sheet. And come back here and refresh and see if it finds the style sheet. It's taken a few seconds here. Okay, it just took a couple of refreshes and uh, then it's picked up the style sheet information and displayed that. So if you're going to have multiple assignments that you want to keep separated I recommend making a folder for each one and making the start page for what's in that assignment another index page. Um, this index page is completely different than the index page from the root folder. So they don't see each other. They, I mean, we can link to one another, but um, this is reading different information than what's in the one folder. Now to manage files on your server, we can go in, we can open a folder, we can delete individual files just by selecting it. You can press delete on the keyboard. You can also right click and choose delete. And it's going to ask you to confirm that yes, you want to delete that file. 
You can also delete folders. Like if I come back out here to my root and I just want to get rid of that whole folder, I can right click or just select it and click delete. And it's going to say, you're really sure you want to do one directory with its contents? And we'll say yes. So then that whole thing is gone. To make a new folder, you can right click in the blank area. You don't want to right click on another folder because if you do, it'll make a folder inside that folder. So right click on a blank area and choose create directory. So directories are the same thing as folders. So say you're going to make this for your final project. We're going to make a folder called final. And then you could take all of the files for your final project and put them into that folder. So then, let's try on the server here, you would go to your folder called final. And right now there's nothing in there. But if I come back here and again upload these files, I'm just going to do and put this file into the final folder. And then we refresh it. It's taking a few times to refresh it. Okay, so it took a few times to refresh that. So you can see how to create folders, which are called directories on your web server, how to upload. Uh, one other thing I want to caution you about is that if you double click on a folder or you double click on a file on the server side, it's going to try to copy your file from your server down to whatever directory you have open over here. So if I double click this index file, it's going to warn me that there's already one called index there and I'm going to overwrite whatever is there. So if you have an older version of your index page here and you've made changes on it and haven't uploaded it yet, then it's possible that you will be downloading this and overwriting all your changes. So you want to be very careful about double clicking on the server side and copying files down. If you're not sure, just hit cancel and go back and check your files to make sure that you're not going to overwrite something. If um, I double click on this final folder, it opens the folder, but again, if I double click on um, one of the files there, it's going to try to download it back down to the site or to your local computer. So just be aware of that because it's very easy to get in and start double clicking and moving around and then all of a sudden you've got things going back and forth and we don't want you to lose all the work that you've put in uh, by just downloading the wrong file by mistake. So that's an introduction to using FileZilla for uploading and managing files on your web server.